Howdy, y'all. Joe Hills here, recording as I was due in Nashville, Tennessee. You and I may see USA and EU scores. What could that possibly mean? Well, let me tell you, Cub Fan and Good Time Scar came up with this Concorp International Golf Tournament. We are in the middle of it now as I record this episode. We had to split the tournament into two days because it is insanely time-consuming to play a golf tournament where you have extra crazy rules. But we live-streamed uh, the first part on the 3rd of July, which is today for me, but the past for you. And we're going to do the next segment on next Monday, and we're going to start at 1 p.m. Central U.S. time. I don't know what time that is in your time zone. Make sure to follow us on Twitter. Anyway, between now and then, though, i got to record my next episode of Hermitcraft. i got to get back out to my hermitage and do some more work there. So one thing Cub has done is he's asked everybody to leave all of our tridents and everything here, our ball markers, so that way we don't accidentally, um, you know, die and lose all the stuff that we actually need for the contest. So we'll leave our ice and everything there. I guess I should probably re-equip my sword now that I'm not being sportsmanlike. Now you might be wondering, Joe, where's the rest of your gear? Well, it's all back at the Concorp Country Club. We've got locker room there. So I went ahead and I stored all my stuff. Why don't we go ahead and grab that? We will be on our way back to our island. So, let's see. Look at these amazing signs. This tunnel, an extension of the Western Tunnel, is actually uh, pretty close to the uh, Hermitage Firewatch Island. Is that the name of the island? I think it might be. Or it might be something entirely else. I don't know. From uh, Greg Avon's Tamarat's Fate. Okay, so we want to go to Hole 1 is that way. So, anyway, we are going to run back to the Concorp Country Club locker room grab our gear, and continue with our build. It's always fun to take a break from building a hermitage to hang out with the other hermits of our age. So we might as well do that now. Time skip! As you can see, the entire country club here is decked out for the Ryder Cup USA-EU contest. Now, the way the scoring works is each team uh, tries to win each hole. And right now... The U.S. has won one hole, and the E.U. has won three holes. The rest we all tied on, which is fine. Oh, here we go. Here's our American locker room. I can just go over to this Joe Hill's locker, and boom, look at that. There's everything I could possibly need to continue my construction on the Hermitage. So we're just going to click as loudly and quickly as possible, you know. Boom, got our shiny pants back on. Can't have those during a regulation Regularation. A regular regulation golf tournament on account of the shimmering. People would see that that shine and they would just be like, whoa, Joe, uh, that's too much. Um, I was going to say flashes on your britches, but flashes and britches don't actually rhyme. I don't know. We'll come back to that. Also, we're going to keep going until we find where the portal is because I might have misplaced it. I know it's somewhere around here. Scar, you and your amazing uh, architecture. There it is. Boom. There's the portal. There's our sign. We will go. It is time to continue construction. Let us fly. Fly, you fools! Fly! Fly, skip. I don't know. I do like the way they've spelled the word hub. Yeah, but seriously, though. Time, skip. We have returned to our wonderful little island here. As you can tell, I've done some exceptionally detailed work on the roof here. We've even got thatched patches for holes in the roof. I actually need to get a lot more wheat to make more thatch patches. This hole here, insufficiently patched with insufficient quantities of thatch, you know? But um, one thing that's actually interesting about the way that this building is laid out is it was kind of envisioned originally that the... Um, military uh, organization that would fortify this building would use this flat part of the roof here to uh, hold, like, archers and a bunch of supplies and stuff, and then they could shoot over the roofs at uh, any kind of invaders and then kind of fall back. So it's kind of an interesting little thing where they use the slope of the roof as kind of miniature fortifications on their major fortification, you know? But uh, having the roof on here really does flesh everything out a little bit. Obviously, we still haven't done all of our internal space work here on the uh, barracks, which are now the hermit cells. Um, I still have lots of little details that I need to add, but just on the whole, having the roofs partially in does kind of flesh out the space. 
having the second floor kind of sorted a little bit. It's not perfect. Still need to get more sandstone. I'm actually out of sandstone. So we're going to have to go on a massive sandstone run. Additionally, I believe I might have actually made this uh, tower thicker than it needs to be. It's just slightly too large around, which is kind of okay. Visually, though, it's it's pretty huge. It is a it's like a grain silo, which eh, maybe that has its place here, but I don't know. Oh yeah, and I still need to add all the windows to the front and sort out this kind of general pattern here. This is not the final resting place of this Hermitage's northern face, I guess. Yeah, because the sun sets in the west over there. So yeah, this is the no, this is the southern face. Hey, I have a southern face. We have a lot in common, this hermitage and me. But yeah, I think uh, on the whole, this is starting to come together. I did some work as well. Um, this is where they would pour hot oil on invaders originally. But now that this is like a vacation monastery for spiritual retreats, they probably don't pour hot oil on people anymore. They probably pour relaxing massage oil or something. Probably not when you walk through the front door. That would still be a little weird. So anyway... Let's go ahead and head to the mine and mesa to grab all of the marvelous, marvelous sandstone that we will need in order to continue work on this project. Time skip. The time has skipped, but tables have also flipped. And you might say, Joe, in what context, though, have tables upturned? Have you flown too close to the sun? Like Icarus, your wing is burned? Well, no, my wings are fine, guys. Thanks for asking. But you know what? I just got back from PlayOnCon, where I hosted a Minecraft build contest and a table flipping contest. And uh, what else did I do? Oh, yeah, a, a talk on uh, parenting at conventions. Like, um, because, you know, people who have kids want to learn how to, like, make sure that they're having the optimal amount of fun with their kids at all times. One thing I'm realizing, though, is that this door here, this should be facing a window. You know what? There also needs to be a window on the opposite side, you know, that's like kind of uh, mirroring that. Now, I don't know if that's actually going to look right from out here. So what we're going to do is we're going to run up our stairs, kind of get a sense of this. This front room here actually has several windows, but I haven't started really working on that at all yet. Okay, so it's going to seem a little bit lopsided, although the, the roof segment there makes it pretty clear that that's going to be centered within that. We're also going to have to cl clean up this part of the wall here. But what I'm thinking I need to do is get some stairs and create basically um, the kind of small windows that look like kind of arrow slits. Because once again, this was originally a fortress. So, boom, sandstone stairs. Great. More sandstone stairs? Even better. You might say, Joe, that's like four stacks of sandstone stairs. How many windows does this place need? Well, because it's open to the sea, it needs a lot. Because the sea is exceptionally good at circulating salt. And you might be like, well, salt, how much of that do you really want circulated? Isn't that a problem? You know what? I'm not an electrolytician, so we'll just leave that to the specialists. But in the meantime, there we go. Look at that. That is a cozy little window for a cozy little vacation getaway. But yeah, speaking of vacation getaways, I just got away from Play on Con. Oh yeah, I just mentioned that. What else happened at Play on Con? You know, it, it's got to, I got to say, it's one of those things, this is my 12th time going to Play on Con. No, sorry, that can't be right, because there have only been 12 Play on Cons. This is my 11th time going to Play on Con, and it is always an interesting convention, because it's held at a uh, campground in the middle of the woods. So, you know, it's one of those things like, hey, do you want to hang out with people dressed like Link from The Legend of Zelda? You can do that. Do you want to shoot actual bows and arrows next to them? You can also do that. So, uh, oh, one of the coolest things they had at Play on Con this year was um, when we were canoeing out on the lake, they actually had an ice cream boat, which I don't know if you've ever seen an ice cream truck. In some places uh, in the United States, they do this thing. There's a tradition where somebody will have a motor vehicle that has been modified to um, provide... Uh, kind of music kind of thing, and it, it'll, like, play amplified electrical music, like, uh, usually, like, Pop Goes the Weasel or other traditional non-copyrighted uh, tunes because, you know, they don't want to get um, slammed for those like Wells Knight did. But, um, 
you know, so they've got the, there's this concept historically of, the, of this ice cream truck. And in lieu of ice cream trucks on the lake, what they have is a boat called the ice cream boat. And it's a pontoon boat that has been heavily modified to hold like a lot of ice cream coolers. And then they uh, take your money and give you ice cream. It's pretty effective. Uh, my daughter was very excited about the ice cream boat. And they also have a fresh lemonade where they're actually like, they've got a huge bag of lemons on the boat and they're squeezing lemons to make lemonade. It's refreshing. So I, I was just thinking though, like that's gotta be the best business in the world because it's like this guy and his wife and they just hang out on a boat and then people paddle their canoes up to them or speed their power boats over or whatever. Um, it's hard to see that from on top of the roof directly. But dang it, ah. Okay. I feel like we could do a little bit better on the symmetry portion of this. But it's not, you know, bad. Like, I guess, oh, you know what I bet it is? I think this segment here it has a different number of blocks in it. Yeah, that's right. This this side of the room is slightly bigger than this side of the room. So in the very least, what I'll do is I'll flip that set of stairs around to look slightly better. Also, I'm going to come through here and I'm going to replace these um, with normal sandstone. Because I, I feel like that's... I, I, just, I know what I want to do with that and it's not what I did. There we go. So that whole gateway doorway there will actually now look slightly better. Oh, yeah, look at that. But, yeah, so, ice cream boat. That is, like, the ideal dream retirement job for me. It's right up there with falling off of platforms immediately after climbing stairs toward them. You know, it plays to my strengths. You get to talk to people. You get to hang out on a boat all day. Like, like I've just... I feel like I, I, I've come to a decision about the rest of my life. Just, just witnessing the brilliance of the ice cream boat. Okay, so that there, that'll kind of pad it out a little bit. I mean, one option, too, is to move this... I mean, I don't know. It's not going to be perfectly symmetrical, but it's also like a military installation where they don't necessarily optimize for true architectural symmetry. There's like some sort of military advantage to having these be slightly asymmetrical. So that's what they did. That's what they did. We're just gonna we're just gonna lean into that so hard. Now this wall over here is also supposed to have some windows in it. Looking at the map, and those are also kind of fairly close to the roof. But like the problem is this wall, you're gonna be uh, coming into this chamber if you're too far that way. So we might actually have to put our windows over kind of on this side here. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna look good though. So then we'll swing up this way. Whoops. I kind of would prefer the windows be down lower so that you could peer through them in Minecraft, but I don't want to have them necessarily directly over the roof. Now, the book itself does not really care what height the windows are at, but from a military standpoint, you should be able to stand here and shoot arrows out of it, so that's probably more plausibly where it should be. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, yeah, that is a problem, though, if I can't... So that window, I'm actually going to be hitting the wall there. Hmm. Well, that's fine. That might seem a little bit strange that it's lined up perfectly with the roof. But what more could I do? It's Minecraft, you know? It's, it's not a perfect science. It's a perfect art form. Now we're also uh, going to pop a window in over here. Oh, that's a nice window you can kind of see out in the yard. Not anymore. Hmm. It's strange that this one only has the one window, but... Oh, you know what the issue is here? I think I might make this window just larger, though. Can I, I can do that. Perfect. Perfect window. Just kidding. Ta-da! I kind of... Maybe I want to have a, a bigger window here. Maybe I want to have some slabs or something. 
No, that didn't work. I was gonna say, does it does it work as a is this that still look okay, that looks like a window, right? That could be a window. You can technically fall through it, but it's it's a window for all intents and purposes. Excellent jumping. So we are gonna head back to bed and time skip. Well, that's already an improvement. Just look at this. Six windows, not perfectly symmetrical. But, you know, from a military standpoint, your enemies might expect perfect symmetry, so you gotta confound them any way you can. We got some extra arrow slits, some extra overlooks on either side here. I've also swung through here. These doors don't operate the way that I think they should if they were real doors. But once again, you know, monks have people come here to get in touch with their spiritual side. Maybe doors work differently if you're spiritual enough. I don't know. I'm not spiritual enough. My doors just open one at a time on their three hinges. But whatever. That's fine. Hey, look at this, though. We got these logs in here. We got some fences. Got some doors. You know, additional windows out here. I'm pretty happy with how all this came together. And I thank you guys for joining me this episode. You might have noticed that this episode was mid-roll ad-free. That was thanks to a $100 a month Patreon donation from Bioduck. We're trying something different with these $100 donations, because with those, I don't actually read a poem. And uh, I was like, you know, that feels like kind of a cop-out. But you know what? Last time Bioduck donated $100, somebody was like, Joe, if you're not going to read a poem, then I'm going to write my own poems, and I'm going to post them in the YouTube comment section below, and you can't stop me. I was like, no, my friend, I can't stop you. In fact, I want to embolden you. So if there's a poem in your heart that you would like to share in the YouTube comment section below, what I'm going to do from now on with these $100 a month Patreon sponsors is um, I'm going to give you a prompt for you to write your own poem. And the prompt I have for today is Like Me Off Facebook. I feel like there's something there. You know, we see this message, like us on Facebook, like me on Facebook, all the time. It's printed everywhere. What? How do we want to be liked in a modern era? And must it be an act of rebellion? I can't imagine. But maybe you can. So I'm looking forward to seeing your comments in the YouTube comment section below. Thank you for joining me today again as we worked on Greg Avon's Hermitage from Chapter 7 of Wizards of the Coast Leaders book, Ghosts of Saltmarsh. They are not paying me to say that, but I feel like I would be stealing from Greg Avon if I didn't give him credit every time I showcase this magnificent concept of a building. He really killed it. So, you know what? That's, that's one of the things that's great about collaborating and building on things that other people make, standing on the shoulders of giants, you know? So, hopefully in the same way that I am expanding and interpreting Greg Avon's hermitage concept, you guys jump on that poetry prompt. If you don't want to write a poem, you don't have to write a poem. But them that do, you're welcome to. Anyway, until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring. <laughs>